Alrighty, what happens next? I've left the Damas 2 investigation to Francisca and returned to Babel. It's a good thing I thought that out. I thought that inside my own head at this exact moment, or anybody who was reading my mind at this moment wouldn't know what I was doing. I suppose my first order of business should be to look into Babel's statue. Mr. Edgeworth! Suddenly, K! Oh, wow! It's a cavalcade of friends! Hello! It's okay, what's the situation? Oh, it's great! Investigating is so much fun! In other words, they've made absolutely no progress. To be fair, I did not anticipate them being able to do so! You were goofing off on us, sir! I didn't accuse you of that, so it's not a very good sign for your case. We, we wouldn't investigate in our hearts out! Very well then, would you care to give me an update on your investigation? Well, quite honestly, sir, no, I would like not to do that. Uh, we've had a really fun time, sir. I knew it. Zero progress. In any case, Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir? You have permission to enter the Alabastian Embassy, is that correct? You know it, yep. As a local detective, I'm helping out with investigations on both sides, sir. Good. In that case, I can leave these pieces of evidence with you. He's unloading that stuff. They belong to the lady under the pink princess's mask. The pink princess? What kind of lady was playing her, sir? The kind that was also playing the role of the pink badger yesterday. Oh dear god, why? Uh, understood, sir. If I happen to run into her, I'll give them back to her. Uh, and if I don't, then I guess I'll unload them somewhere. Maybe an incinerator. He doesn't seem all that enthused to go find her, but I can't blame him! Evidence that has lost their value given to Detective Gumshoe. Gotcha. Now then, I don't believe I'll be needing this anymore either. What? Are you really gonna throw that autograph away? It is from a falsehood! Yes, because that Steel Samurai was a fake. Steel Samurai's autograph is crunched up into a ball and disposed of. Wait, what? What do you mean by fake? Now then, I believe it's time for a little housekeeping. Unnecessary evidence has been- This is going to be such an unbelievably long case that it, the game actually has to take time to toss out irrelevant evidence so it doesn't clutter up the inventory. That's honestly hilarious. Alright. Well, you mind letting me know exactly what I do got? Alright, got my badge, the guide, babble statue, the coaching buddy, the key, then stabby stabby, paper document, knife handle, Counterfeit bills, Babylon's ink, the samurai spear, alabaster statue, the passion flowers, the mass notes, and samurai dogs. I just have those. All right. I don't know how that wasn't deemed unnecessary or irrelevant, but I guess it was. Yes. What up, my girl? What up? How's the investigation going in the Babylon's secretariat's office, Kay? We've made no progress whatsoever, but it's really fun hanging out with Gumshoe. Well, even though we found a few treasures, they've all been pretty much burnt to a crisp. A treasure is a terrible thing to waste. A anyway, is there anything else I should know about? Uh, oh, that's right. Uh, you know what I found in that office? A wooden bear carving. It's so cute. Can I have it? Huh? Can I? No, oh, of course you can't. By the sound of things, it appears that there has been no progress in the investigation. To the shock and awe of absolutely nobody. Also, hello. I'm just... I need to know. Hmm. A ladder. Actually, that's a stepladder! The connection continues regardless! It doesn't need to be Phoenix! Ha! The ultimate running joke! They're the exact same thing. No way! From their structure up, they're totally different. But of course, from a thief's perspective, the best kind of ladder is the rope ladder. The stepladder is much too heavy to carry around, after all. That's true. And from a prosecutor's perspective, any type of ladder is guilty of being dangerous during an earthquake. I mean, yes. Anyway, I'm really glad I decided to walk over there. I, <laughs> it, it's like the game refuses to ever let that opportunity ever slip by. And I, I love it. It's a universal constant. Doesn't matter what characters are doing it. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth. You look like you're enjoying yourself, detective. Yeah, it's pretty swell. I don't have much else that I enjoy as much as a good investigation, sir. I also like noodles. So, what did you find out? Ta <laughs> well. Ha ha ha! Ha! Ah, yeah. I take it he's found nothing of any particular use, as usual. I personally believe that they made a very strong effort. Just because they weren't able to get anything doesn't mean they didn't try. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, I got something really interesting from Ambassador Paleno. Oh, and what is this something interesting? 
Uh, this, sir. Is that a lantern? Wow, that's so pretty. I'm so jealous. That's a real treasure there. I believe it is a lantern, Kay. You can get those at any hardware store. What does the, why does the flame burn green, detective? So apparently, if you burn the special white crystal oil that they only make in Babel, it burns this green color, sir. Interesting. So it's a special property of the oil. I suppose this is a ploy to force people to visit Babel should the royal run out. Hey, Gummy, what about these silhouettes? I stuck some cutouts on the outside of the lantern so it projects the images. Hmm. Huh. Silhouettes, huh? They are rather pretty, aren't they? Wait, what am I doing? I was supposed to be asking for an update on the investigation. Hey, what's wrong, sir? Eh, there's something I want you to investigate for me. Do you think you can do that much? Uh, uh sure. Let's say that I can. You got it, sir. Hey, that's not fair. Why is Gummy getting to do all the fun stuff? Ah, well, that's because I'm Mr. Edgeworth's partner. Boodle, 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 boodle. Ah, I can't believe you took advantage of the confusion and stole my role as assistant. I expect the two of you to get along and work together like professionals on this. And, okay, well, I got the lantern. I'm sure that'll be handy dandy. Something about burning green is going to matter. Anyway, hello there. Ah, so you're back now, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? You must be tired. Here, with these, you can eat whatever you'd like. More coupons! And these are discount tickets for our cafeteria. They open tomorrow at 10 in the morning. I appreciate the concern. However, these coupons do nothing for me right now. That being said, you can give me some information. This open air stage, what function does it serve exactly? Well, normally we use it for a variety of events. It's all to attract the extra bit of attention to Babel. I heard that tonight over in the Alabastian Rose Garden, Ambassador Alba was to give a speech. And you know what? Manny told me that I really should give a speech too. Mr. Colchin told you to do that? Yes, he did. Which is why I thought I should give a speech of my own. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Because of the fire you had a goddess who started? Exactly. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but fires tend to kind of kill the mood sometimes, you know? Ambassador Palino, I'd like to ask you a little more about the Prima Do statue. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, let me ask you this. Did you know that Alabast in battle used to be one country called Cadopia? Yes, I know that much about your history. I'm not a complete and total blithering moron. Well, the statue belonged to the founders of Cadopia. At least that's how the story goes. It was bequeathed unto them by the king of, uh, unto the king of Cadopia as a symbol of the country's wealth. So it was meant as a symbol of sovereignty and the rest are rule, I take it? Yes, that's right, which is why both countries are so adamant about their claim. We hold the real statue, therefore we hold the right to rule, is the reasoning. Hmm, that make, I guess that makes some degree of sense. It's pretty petty when you think about it, though, I suppose. Indeed! Nice to see somebody actually point that out. But if Alba Alabast and Babel were to re-establish relations, shouldn't that put an end to the squabbling over the statue? I have no reason to believe so. The statue is even more important now as a key to diplomacy. I wonder if Ambassador Pal Palano knows about what has happened to the very important key to diplomacy. Perhaps that I should try showing him his key, this key, and see what he has to uh, say about it. Perhaps I should. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps I sh should. Regardless. Let's see. Ambassador Palano, there's just one thing I'd like to ask you about. Yes? Oh, and don't worry, you can ask me more than just one thing. How about two or three? I'm all about asking people stuff about things. That's how I do. Th thank you, but just the one thing is all I require. Many coaching. I'd like to ask you about this man who was your secretary. <laughs> sure, I'll tell you what I know. Thank you for your cooperation, Ambassador. He was, well, if I had to put it in one word, he was an able man. That's not really one word, but I get your point and I won't raise a stink. If there was anything I needed as an ambassador, he was able to get it for me. To think that a man like that had a hand in a smuggling ring right under my nose, going completely unnoticed. Actually, I suppose because he was an able man, I was unable to detect his dirty dealings. <laughs> Sounds like Mr. Cochin had a very sharp mind. Recently, Manny had been really busy. Since I became the Babelese representative at the Country, U uh, yeah, country Unification Council, he's been working tirelessly to cover my work for me. I'm sorry, but what is this Country Unification Council? The CUC? Oh, well, you see, had tonight's events proceeded without a hitch, our two countries were to reunify and become one again. But I guess with how things turned out, that dream won't be realized anytime soon. Mm, I suppose not. 
Ain't that a pile of butts? All right then, let's see here. I believe we want to show off. There you go, this one particularly. Here you go. Ambassador Palino, if you could please take a look at this for me. The statue sitting in Alabast right now actually belongs to Babel. So it would appear. I received a call from Miss Von Karma about this earlier. Then you'll understand why I wish to inspect Babel's uh, statue immediately. Because the statue currently in your country's possession... Yes, well, I've already inspected it myself. And it is definitely Alabast's statue. I know because it's the real statue. Oh! Then you're saying that Babel's was a replica? I'm embarrassed to say it's true, even though I knew that someday it would be exposed. I received my orders from the leaders of Babel, and I was to negotiate with Ambassador Alba at this event. I was to negotiate with him and fix the results of the evaluation tonight, to say that we could not determine which statue was the real one. Why are you telling me this? Well, because you already figured it out. A statue is just a hollow gold shell. Even if Babel were to lose face, the reunification of the country is what's important. I'm right in thinking that, aren't I? I'm not making a mistake, right? If you don't know yourself, then I won't pretend to know either. I never thought that by being betrayed by my own secretary, the real symbol of wealth would be given to me. Isn't it simply ironic? Isn't it ironic, don't you think? Hey, where are you going? You heading back to Alabast? Yes, but before I do, I suppose I should give you a summary of what's happened. After one serious discussion session... Oh, I see. So, there's been a murder in both countries using an object from the other country? That's the gist of it. Babel is just as strict as Alabast in their inspection of the people and things that enter their country. So we gotta kinda figure out how the hell that all happened. Meaning that somehow both murder weapons were smuggled into the two countries. That's the only logical conclusion that can be drawn. I'm gonna be honest with you, one of those seems a whole lot easier to smuggle than the other. <laughs> I'm just saying, a statue is one thing, a knife is another. That's just, I'm just saying. That's the only logical conclusion that can be drawn. Perhaps the key to the weapon smuggling is the person who traversed both countries. You mean the fake Yadagadasu? In one way or another, the Yadagadasu is connected. Of this I am sure. Now then, where was the Yadagadasu first spotted? I believe it was the Rose Garden on the Alabastian side of the embassy. The garden is just on the other side of this boundary. That's where Ambassador Alba was to give a speech tonight. At least that's where I heard the Yadagadasu had appeared. In that case, I believe it's vital that I investigate the Rose Garden post-haste. Wait, before you go, take a look at this, Mr. Edgeworth. The heck is that? What is it? I guess it's that it's a guitar pick. I picked it up just now over there. Do you think it'll be of any use? There is a little water on it, but how did the water get on it? Doesn't look like there's anything I can get wet from around here. I was thinking, they have concerts here at this open air stage from time to time, right? All right, I'll find its owner later. Huh, interesting. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. <laughs> Digging in my thief bag. Mr. Edgeworth, would you be willing to hold on to this? What is, what the, why do you even have that? It's misused perfume. It's the bottle that woman left behind and that I found seven years ago. And I thought that one day it'd be of some use in tracking her down. So I kept it safe all this time. Thank you, I'd be honored to hold on to it for you. Interesting. I don't know how, but I'm sure it's going to end up being incredibly useful at some point. All right, then. Uh, well, with that all being said, I, I guess we're done. We're absolute donezo. All right, walking around, walking around. I think I'll be returning to the investigation in Alabast now, but... I know, I know. I'll go back to Babel and do some more investigating there. I really like how some characters are allowed in some places and others are allowed in others. That way you're constantly forcing yourself to go around and switch your partner up. It's a good way of you know, incorporating all of the cast. Good luck with your investigating. Well, that do be looking like a rose garden to me. I see you're back, Miles Edgeworth. Oh, there's only one person I know who speaks to me that ridiculously formally. She returns! How are things in Babel? Although I can't really say I expect much from Scruffy and that girl. The investigation into Mandy Cochin's death hasn't really progressed any. However, the investigation into the Yadagadasu has. Ah yes, the Yadagadasu. Even now I find it hard to believe. A person who can freely traverse between the two countries at will? Preposterous. Well, that's what I came here to investigate. I heard that this is where the witnesses claim to have seen the Yadagadasu. 
That's correct. Ambassador Alba was to give a speech tonight here in Alabast. And that's when the Yadagarasu appeared. Or rather, a, a, their silhouette did, as it turns out. The shadow of the mysterious thief appeared and just as suddenly it vanished. After that, there was the fire at the Babylese Embassy that the Yadagarasu started. Mm. Wiggle wiggle with my finger! I vowed that not a single feather from the Yadagarasu shall escape my diligence. Investigation has begun! Do I got you? I got the friend! Woo! Alright, you love, you love to see, you really do. Anyway, what have you got to say? Tonight, in this video of those garden, the Alabastian Ambassador... Alba was to give a commemorative speech. A very commemorative speech at that, as opposed to a novelty one. And including Agent Lang, the security detail was very tight. But, as if to mock our efforts, the other who appeared. Then, just like that, he vanished and starts a fire at the Bali's embassy. Interesting. And are you sure it was the Yadagata who appeared here? Of course! But to have slipped by such tight security, and then disappeared into thin air, we will need to conduct a very thorough investigation of this area. Yes, my thoughts exactly. In order to find out the truth behind what happened here, then I should start by gathering as much information as I can. So let's friggin' go! Alright, what should I be looking at? Whoa, hang on, that looks like something. That's a big honking statue! Huh? The statue bears a resemblance to the statue. <laughs> Why do I for- I, 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 I forgot how to pronounce- Prima do? Prima do? Papa do? I don't know anymore! There, I admit it! Get off my back! The plague says King Prima Ducks- Pr Prima Donna Ducks and the battlefield. In order to save the queen, the king put his life on the line and went to war. So, he was actually a person of royal blood. I thought he was simply someone in- Mutating a character from an ancient legend. Well, what surprises me is that the real person who looked like the Steel Samurai existed. I suppose there's that too. Alright then. Uh, let's see. Do I even want to talk to you? I mean, I don't, but like... Have you finished checking all the bystanders? Yes, sir! And we found 14 counts of pickpocketing, 16 counts of illegal parketing, and one person ran a light, sir. Don't tell me you didn't find out anything related to the case. Sir, not a single thing, sir! Oi. Well, for now, let's just get those other lawbreakers down to the precinct. Agent Lang. Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor, I would just like to thank you for your assistance earlier. Make no mistake, it's not like I was trying to help you with what I did, Baka. Mm-hmm, indeed. After I left, did you receive word from Ambassador Alba? We're going to wrap up our bodyguard assignment at the end of the day. Healthy enough, we received word from HQ to return home on an urgent matter. As if I can be so easily called away from this case after I've come this far. I swear that I'll find the truth and drag it out screaming into the light. You're with me on that right, Mr. Prosecutor. I mean, yes. Obviously. Slightly confused why Sedra didn't respond to that. You were working as Ambassador Alba's bodyguard at the time. So, naturally, you witnessed when the Yadagadasu appeared, correct? Yeah, I saw the thief, all right. With my own two eyes. Of course, I was wearing my ridiculously impractical sunglasses at the time, so... I mean, I didn't see a lot. The Yadagatasu was always there, lurking in the shadows, like some kind of stink eagle. But when the spotlights were turned on for Ambassador Alba's speech, a shadow appeared. That's when cries of, It's the Yadagatasu! rang out. The next second, the spotlight went out. And by the time we got the area lit again, the deaf thief had vanished. When we investigated afterwards, we found that the reason the lights went out was because someone had unplugged the extension plug from all the outdoor electronics. That's right, they only had the one. Seems a bit of like a safety hazard to me, but what do I know? Whether it was someone doing it on purpose, or porpoise, who's to know? It could be a nefarious walrus or beluga whale, or simply a guest who had tripped over it. I don't know. But one thing is for certain, the Yadagatasu was here. So you're saying that basically all you saw was the thief's silhouette? Yes. If all you saw was a shadow, then it's entirely possible that the shadow belonged to someone else. Francisca, you were saying the exact same thing, though. I mean, the difference being I like you and dislike him, so I'm at a crossroads here. Huh. Good thing it's this. You just might be right. If it weren't for the fact that there was no one else with that same, that same shape. Not among the staff or the audience members. 
My men have already done a thorough check of everyone, so I know I'm right. Someone else's shadow. That sounds like a plausible hypothesis. All right. Well, I think I've already kind of got this one figured out, no? Like, hang on. Let me see something here. What about you? Let me, let me look at both these ding-dang statues. Hmm. A statue of a woman. I wonder if the lady is pouring water. Sure seems that way. It says that it's a statue of the queen who spoke of love to King Primadux. Hmm. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it seems that you're a lousy at reading a woman's heart. I opened my mouth about a statue and she somehow made the leap to that. Francisca, you are a goober. All right, so I can't do what I want to do. Do I have any logic chunklets? I sure as all hick and heck do not. All right, then fine. Let's look at the pool. There are roses scattered on the surface of the water, creating a pleasant fragrance. Although it's going to clog the filter something fierce. It's not just for aesthetics. This pool's water is also used in putting out fires, because I guess that's something that happens frequently enough to be possible. Huh. Let me see. Oh. The pool stopped filling itself automatically, like some kind of auto magic. The fountain spouts are set to stay open until the pool's water reaches a certain level. If this water is used to put out fires, I suppose it must be refilled to its normal level. It would suggest that this pool was recently used somehow in this episode. Uh, what do you mean somehow? There was a fire. They used it to put out the fire. I guess I'll take some notes about it just in case. I mean, I'm sure that is somehow going to be useful information regardless. It just, I, I don't think it's much of a mystery as to why the water level was low. There was a pretty big one. Oh dear God, why? Hello. How dare you surprise me like that? I'm sorry. Oh, hey, Edgy. Thanks for what you did back there. Your gratitude, your gratitude, sure. Your gratitude alone is enough. More importantly, Larry, this pool is not for your personal enjoyment. I know that. Do you really think that I'm the type to just jump into a pool and swim around for fun? Says the guy who was literally trying to pass off the notion that he wanted to climb down a chimney imitating Santa Claus just for the hell of it. Sure, yeah, all right. Also, so, I mean, yeah. All right then, did you by chance fall into the pool? Nice guess, but no dice. So, you know my son, right, Edgy? What? Your son? Yeah, I guess I kind of lost sight of him when I shook hands with the ambassador. I'm going to assume you mean the... 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 the I'm not sure if that was a doll or an actual child, though. And I'm pretty sure he was around here when I last saw him! You imbecile! How can you be so flippant at a time like this? What are you going to do if your son fell into the pool? And how old is this child of yours anyway? Huh? Oh, uh, pff, how old is he again? Larry, this is the first I've heard of a son. Who exactly is the mother? The mother? Oh, that shit. The, the pink princess? Yeah, he's, okay. The pink princess. <sighs> Miss Von Karma? I was a bit confused by this man's words for a bit there, but uh, yeah, no, don't worry. I pieced together his absolute asinine gobbledygook. However, I believe what he is actually looking for is the doll of the Iron... That's what I was trying to think of. The Iron Infant. Yep, because I'm the Steel Samurai through and through. Heart and soul. And the Iron Infant is my cute little son. You have given a whole new meaning to the phrase, an astounding fool. Man, you don't know the depths of which he can truly sink. Although, admittedly, he is trying to make an example of that. Larry, you've not seen hide nor hair of the Iron Infant. But rest assured that if we should find him, we'll let you know. Now get the hell out of here. Sounds good. In that case, I'll go search over there. Uh, all right. <sighs> well, it's not as if he'll get very far swimming around in that pool. And though he's unrelated to the murders, he sure knows how to cause a lot of trouble. The suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yadagadasu. I believe I figured out its true origin. Oh. oh, okay. I was expecting like logic chunklets to pop up and I would need to fuse them together to get that all figured out. But okay. Uh, my hypothesis is that it's the statues. You could probably, like, shadow puppetry, you know? You can just sort of fuse different shadows together and you can make almost anything look like anything if you use the right, like, angle. I expected no less from my subordinate. Now, let's hear what you know on the subject. What really cast a shadow of the Yadagatasu? I mean, especially if they're going to just, you know, like, pick the object around these parts. I guess maybe it was incredibly obvious. That's always a bit of a bummer. 
the suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yadagadasu. Is it not possible that it was created by this statue? Are you playing me for a fool, Riles Edgeworth? I would never dare. This statue bears absolutely no resemblance to the shadow of the Yadagadasu. You are correct. However, this statue is but one part of the whole picture. Wh what do you mean by only one part? I mean only one part! What is the other part to the real form of the Yadagatasu shadow? I'm going to guess. The other one is mostly because the stage lights are like right next to these statues. Take that. That's my guess. It's another statue? The Yadagatasu shadow was made from those the shadows of these two statues. Made? What do you mean by that? Right now, the spotlights are all over the dang place. This is because they were moved when the guests were in a panicked state. However, if we were to restore the lights to where they were when the thief appeared, you believe that the two shadows will create the Yadagadasu shadow? Precisely. Now then, watch as I reveal the true form of the Yadagadasu! First, if we set up a spotlight to cast a shadow of King Primadux and the battlefield. There you go, that's all- that, that's most of it right there! The shadow of the king's statue would appear on the backdrop of the stage. Likewise, if we set a light up on the queen who spoke of the love to King Primadux, her silhouette would also appear on the backdrop of the stage, and I'm beginning to see a bit of a problem here. Ah, so if you were to combine the two shadows, it looks like that. That looks like a statue of a narwhal! It looks nothing like the Yanagatsu shadow! Miles Edgeworth, how do you explain this grotesque shape? Narwhals! Calm down, Francisca! Down, girl! The way the light needs to be shown on the queen statue is wrong. What do you mean by that? I believe that the whole of the king's shadow needs to be used for this to work. However, in the case of the queen, I don't believe her whole shadow is needed. Rather, the person who created the shadow only used one part of her shadow. Only one part. What part of the statue? What? How does that work? Yes, and that one part alone is enough to fill in the rest of the Yadagatasu shadow. Why didn't you say that in the first place? You're right, I, I apologize. Now, what part of the Queen's statue was used to complete the Yadagatasu shadow? Uh, well, just going off of the shape itself, it kinda sorta of, slightly looks like a hand. I don't think those Queen statue's hand is nearly jagged enough for those edges, but... That's all I've got. Think back to what is missing in our shadow. Five long, thin areas, correct? Now what does that remind you of? A hamster! Ah! That's right. It can only be the shadow of the queen's left hand. Not a right one, though. Obviously not. Francisca, can we please adjust the spotlight's position? So that it only shines on the queen's left hand? All right, so let's give it a try and see what we get. Bum, bum, bum! <laughs> yeah, this is exactly like the shadow I saw. Who da ding dang gosh darn thunk it? The culprit must have changed the spotlight's positioning beforehand. And then pulled the plug after people saw what the culprit wanted them to see. In their panic, the guests must have moved the spotlights around. Which we can assume was also part of the culprit's plan. By the time the lights came back on, the Yadagatasu shadow had vanished. Which means that the shadow was a construct from the very beginning! <laughs> A construct? Green Lantern did this? Who the thunk it? So you see, the Yada Goddess who never did visit Alabast tonight. The only country that thief visited was Babel. Although it can be assumed that the Yada Goddess who had an accomplice in Alabast. An accomplice? But who? I haven't figured that out yet, but I assume it was the person who set up the Shadow Show. I sense that the biggest clue yet to solving the case is in the existence of this accomplice. Investigation completione. How's the investigation going? I know that voice in the sense that I know of somebody who speaks that incredibly slowly. There's my guy. Detective Bad, if you come to join us in investigating, investigating the Yadagatasu? I've left the murder in Agent Lang's charge. And my only target from the very beginning is the Yadagatasu. So ye. Yeah. So, what have you found out? Jiggity jack all, son. I got a piece of evidence. May I see it? Sure, but you might regret it. We're here because we are ready to face whatever may come. So, if you please. When people heard the commotion, bystanders started gathering. 
And one woman claimed, I'm telling you, I'm a genuine international <laughs> journalist. Lada! She gave me an interesting picture. A journalist? Well, actually, she's a freelance cameraman. Yeah. This is the photo I got from her. Dear God! Somebody wiped a bugger on this thing! What in the world? The Yada Goddess who is flying through the air? The times, they are a, a changing. Okay, suddenly Bob Dylan. All right. It's not just man, but evidence. Even they lie to us now. When was this photo taken? Apparently, right after the fires on the fourth and fifth floors were put out, it was taken from a nearby building that you can see the embassy from. I see. So this was taken after the fire. Well, it's mine now, so there you go. The blur in this picture took off from the Baba Laba Laba Lysian Embassy. Flew over the boundary and headed for the Embassy of Alabast. Objection! But that's just nonsense! This is simply not possible! People are incapable of flight! Is that a fact? I've had the pleasure of dealing with a case involving a flying person once. So did you, Francisca! Actually... Come to think of it, I've come across a case like that as well. Two, actually. Yeah, alright. That's what I thought. I appreciate the callback. Maybe it happens more often than we think. Maybe the X-Men are a thing. I don't know. Am I up to the task of solving the mystery behind this photograph? Well, I don't really have much of a choice. <laughs> we gotta reach a conclusion eventually. Well, the Yadagazu took off from the Balbalese Embassy, so I should start from there. Francesca, I need to return to the Babel investigation for a bit. All right. Asking for permission like that means some. Whoa, hello. I'll continue investigating on the side of the building. All right, I'm counting on you and your cool haircut. What's up, Kay? Hey, welcome back, Mr. Edgeworth. I literally did absolutely nothing. I just kind of stood here waiting for you to come back. Now, come on, let's get back to our investigation. Yes, let's. And Edgeworth run. Ninja run. Teamwork and friendship. Woo! All right, then. So, I guess... That's really my only real assumption, is to go back here. Go. What you doing over there against that there wall, Mr. Man? You doing something suspicious? I think after all that running around, we're right back where we started. It would appear that way, although the body's gone now. Hi, Mr. Edgeworth. Hello. Have you found Manny's killer yet? I'm terribly sorry, Ambassador Palino, but I have yet to find his killer. And I guess his murder was the work of the Yadagatasu. Let's get one thing straight. It was the work of the fake Yadagatasu. The real Yadagatasu was a noble vigilante who was only out to steal the truth. It's Faraday. Please don't make such a sad face. If there's anything I do for you, all you have to do is ask, all right? Mr. Palino. Actually, there is one thing you can do. Will you allow us to take another look around? We didn't have enough time to conduct a thorough investigation earlier. Sure, please feel free to investigate to your heart's content. Also, there are a few questions I'd like to ask you personally, Ambassador. If it'll bring a smile back to Miss Faraday's face, then I'll gladly answer anything. Thank you, Mr. Palino. You're a total gentleman. <laughs> uh, you don't have to waste such nice words on me, little miss. Hey, Sir Palino. Those two sure got chummy awfully quickly. You know, it's easy to say we're going to investigate, but where should we begin? We should probably start by comparing the state of this room before and after the fire. And then we should look into the matter of the suspicious person you spotted. Yeah, I kind of need to check to see if that uh, chimney can has like a a, a, a a parallel thing with a way to get through. I assume as such, but that's what I got to check. Uh, yeah, when I came into the room, that person was already gone. But I'm willing to bet that that person I was chasing is Mr. Cochin's killer. You don't know that yet. However, it's hard to believe that person is unrelated. Furthermore, because the key the Yadagatasu stole seven years ago was found here, it signals that perhaps Miss Yu is also somehow involved. I knew it! That woman is almost definitely Mr. Cochin's killer. Yet again, we don't know that. Too many mysteries to be solved in this case. I mean, if she is involved? She's either really good at hiding, or I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of strange, isn't it? I feel like we ought to notice something. 
Speaking of the Yada Gata Zoo and mysteries, I received a most mysterious photo from Detective Bad. Uncle Bad? He's taking part in this investigation too? Yes, he's been chasing after the Yada Gata Zoo for all these years. Uncle Bad. Now then, I was told that this photo was taken just after the fire. But, but this guy looks at like the person in the long coat I was chasing. Does this mean that I was chasing the fake Yada Gata Zoo after all? I don't know the answer to your question, but I don't think people can fly either. But this could be how the person escaped. Well, we'll need to investigate a bit more before we can say anything about that. In any case, let's not dwaddle anymore and pick up our investigation where we left off. All right, let's look at some stuff. I'm all about that stuff live. All right, let's see. Anything to notice over there? It appears that Mr. Cochin's body has been taken in for an autopsy. The white outline is all that is left to tell the tale of his murder. Oof. All right, now like, get, get, scoot yourselves over. I got stuff to point out over here. A fireplace, huh? So Baba's offices have them too. Two? There's a fireplace in relatively the same location in the Alabastian office. However, we found something there that I'd rather not recall ever again. <laughs> I still can't believe that we found that lady's undershirt on the fireplace. The world doesn't need to know. If it was that traumatizing, why don't you try creating new memories with this fireplace? You can climb inside, we can play hide and seek. And come out covered in soot? I think not. Ah, you really have no sense of fun, Mr. Edgeworth. Okay, so I guess I don't get a chance to talk about that. I'm sure it's gonna come up at some point, it has to. It appears that this area was heavily damaged by the fire. Yeah, I guess we should hurry up and get started examining everything. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Uh, this looks oddly undamaged for being in a fire. There's a bottle of Babylese ink on Mr. Cochin's desk. And it looks like there's still a lot of ink left inside. The seal is unbroken, so the pro fire probably couldn't get into the bottle to burn up the ink. Why didn't it just burn the seal? Hey, Mr. Palino, looks like your precious Babylese ink is all right after all. What? That's odd. Is it odd for the same reason I'm thinking it's odd? Ambassador, what do you mean by that? Uh, well, it's just that there's something strange about the ink. Would you mind elaborating on that statement for me, please? I guess maybe when we talk to him, he will. That, that would make sense. Is there anything else here? Uh, no, okay, well, he's still saying that there's something else here. Uh, maybe the drawers? It would appear that this desk also fell victim to the fire. It doesn't look too damaged. Oh, I think we can rifle through this drawer a bit. Huh, well, yeah, sure, why not? I suppose we really should take a look. All right, whoa, hello, what's this? This is a rather unusual shape for a notepad. I suppose this must be another souvenir from somewhere. You're, re you're really gonna make me freaking deduce this? Okay, sure. <laughs> I swear, sometimes this game asks you to put two and two together in ways that are just very insulting. Eureka! Eureka! As if it weren't obvious that these were connected. The shape of this notepad matches the shape of this note we found. Hey, you're right. What is it? Looks like something straight out of the Monument Valley. What? Oh, yes, that notepad is a souvenir from somewhere in your country. We've been collecting them for the purpose of studying them, you see. Yes, I do. You do seem to be quite passionate about it. Oh, would you like to see my souvenir collection? I'd love to show it to you. Are you sure they haven't been burned to a crisp by the fires? I don't know. Maybe he projected them really well. It's possible. Ambassador Palino... I wonder if you might recognize the handwriting on this note. Hmm. This looks like Manny's handwriting. I see. In that case, that, that means he was the one who told that one thief to steal the thing. Okay. That makes sense to me. I see. In that case. Oh, did you figure something out? This note was found in Alabast. Specifically, it was found being firmly grasped by the murder Damask 2 Electric Boogaloo. D Damask 2. Then this note. Yes, it was a request from Mr. Cochin for Damask 2 to steal the Prima Duck statue. What? M Manny, tried to steal Alabast's Prima Duck statue? We would know for sure if we could run a handwriting analysis. Ambassador, do you have any documents that were handwritten by Mr. Cochin? Y yes, I can gather a few and give them to you. I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe later to run the analysis. Can't believe that Manny would even think of doing something like this. Do you have any idea as to why he would have requested the theft of the statue? There is one possibility, but mind you, it's just my personal speculation. Anything you can tell me would be of great help, Ambassador. 
You know, I know that he's, like, got this weird perpetual grin, and he's constantly, you're like, you know, wringing his hands together constantly. Is it weird that I trust this dude? I feel like I shouldn't be trusting this dude, but for some reason, I think he's actually just trying to be really helpful. I suppose it's possible he's trying to be incredibly helpful to throw us off any possible track, but I think this guy might be legit. Now then, Ambassador, I'd like to ask about your movements before the fire broke out. Before the fire? Which fire are you talking about? The only fire that I'm aware of? Hello. Which one? There was more than one tonight? Eh? Oh, I see. I guess you didn't hear about it. We had two fires here at the Babelese Embassy tonight. What a bother all of that was. Okay, well, that sounds mildly important. Wait, but the only fire we know about is the one after the Jam and Ninja show. Ah, well, the first occurred at the start of the Jam and Ninja show. Luckily, only the fourth and fifth floors of our embassy caught on fire. Not wanting to cause a panic among the tra theater goers, we- I almost called them the traitor goers? We decided to keep it internal. Then the fire after the Jam and Ninja show was the second one of the night? Exactly. So the fire I witnessed was the second one. Come to think of it, didn't Detective Bad make reference to the first fire? I guess that would make sense that- in a way, yeah. Huh. When was this photo taken? Apparently, right after the fires on the fourth and fifth floors were put out. Interesting. I suppose this means that the photo was taken just after the first fire was put out. Fascinating. So then, what was the extent of the damage in the second fire? The second fire was contained to this floor, the third floor. I think it was leftover embers from the fire on the floors above it that caused it. That's... how should I put this? A very bad stroke of luck? My office on the fifth floor, Manny's office here, and Manny himself, all gone in the blink of an eye. That's depressing. I don't like fire. I have a bit of a fear of it, if I'm going to be entirely real with you. I feel like it's an understandable fear, but one nevertheless. I feel so sorry for you, Mr. Palino. Oh, look at me going on and on. Now then, what was it you wanted to ask again? We were discussing what your actions and whereabouts for today were. And if you happen to know what Mr. Cochin's actions and whereabouts were as well. Yes, very well. Let's see. I've been quite busy all day from morning until now. First I woke up, brushed my teeth. After that I had a roll for breakfast. Oh, hell yeah, rolls are good. Fascinating. How about if you just skip to the relevant parts for me? Oh, you'd like a condensed version? All right, I can do that for you. All right, morning activities, afternoon activities. Let's go, let's go. So, what did Mr. Cochin and you do this morning? Well, originally, we were supposed to meet and shake hands with the Jam and Ninja, but Manny and I wanted to turn it into a photo op, so we were here tidying up his office. You helped clean Mr. Cochin's office? Why were you not cleaning your own? Oh, I think I forgot to mention this, but my office is currently undergoing renovations. Ooh. All right, well, I got note of that, which is why both the Prima Duck statue and the Babalese knife set are down here. Oh, that actually makes a lot of sense, because, yeah, wait, because yeah, their statue was in their ambassador's office, and your statue was in the secretariat. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. I see. Oh, but the tidying didn't take much, really. We just burned some files we no longer needed and expired coupons in the fireplace. I bet cleaning up the fireplace must have been a real pain, though, huh? Ah, about that. I kind of forgot to clean the ashes out. <laughs> Eh, I guess I'm up a creek without Manny here to get angry at me. An ambassador like yourself has been on the receiving end of a secretary's anger? Oh, he was very good at being very mad. Well, even just this morning he got mad at me. I spilled some Babelese ink onto the back wall when I was burning the fi files, you see. I just spill ink while throwing things into a fireplace. And he got mad at me, saying that I should treat the ink with more respect. Mm, bit of a bumbler. Apparently, orders go up the chain of command around here. Noted, though. Thank you kindly. That's about it for what we did this morning. Just some cleaning. Don't tell me you had no other work to do, being an ambassador and all. Well, I mean, we've got afternoon activities, though. Now then, if you could tell me what you and Mr. Cochin did this afternoon. Well, Maddie and I went down together to the Theatrum Neutralis. We had to be there for the start of the Seal Samurai stage show. After the show started, I went back to my office on the fifth floor alone. So they were together until the start of the Steel Samurai show. Noteworthy! A little while later, after I had straightened myself up a bit, I returned to the theater. 
because I was to take part in the photo op on stage at the end of the show. Hmm. There was a commemorative photo op at the end. It was a fantastic photo of the three of us, Ambassador Alba, the Steel Samurai, and myself. After the photo shoot, I went back to my office on the fifth floor to prepare for my handshake photo op with the Jammin Ninja. He seemed to be rather overworked for an ambassador. When I got to my office, that's when the first fire broke out and I escaped down the stairs. My office was completely destroyed, but thankfully no one was hurt. I admit, I ran away from the first fire as fast as my legs could carry me. But during the second one, I pitched in and helped the embassy staff put it out. Ah, so basically, you were terrified of the first one, but then once you realized the second one was happening, you were of straight of enough mind to be able to go, Hey, should probably help. <laughs> so, you didn't see Mr. Cochin again after the start of the Steel Samurai show? Yes, that's right. The next time I saw him, he was lying there in an eternal sleep, which is... Oof. I see. Ambassador Palino, I thank you very much for your help. Sorry, I couldn't be of more assistance, Mr. Edgeworth. If there's anything else, please don't hesitate to ask, all right? Well, I do got a couple things. So what's up with the ink? What's weird about it? Other than, you know, it not being burnt. Isn't ink flammable? It sure seems like the type of thing that'd be flammable. What if you might tell me what you noticed about Mr. Cochin's bottle of ink? Uh, well, I just thought of it right now, but... During the second fire, Manny was worried about his office, so he came rushing back to it. I called out to him, and when I received no reply, I used my spare key to open the door. But when I did, I was greeted by roaring green flames. The flames were so big that I wasn't able to see into the room at all. The fire was green. What was the cause? Well, wet crystal oil burns green when it's lit, as you can see by the lantern. Hmm. Bobbly's ink is made from the same oil, which means it would also burn green. You know... I, too, had thought it was Manny's ink that had caught on fire. So, that's why I was surprised to find out there was still a bottle of ink left on his desk. The case of the perplexing green flames. Talk about a mystery and a boss-ass Hardy Boys novel. What exactly was it that caught on fire in here? Well, apparently something that is at least made of the same material. I believe that you said you might have an idea as to why Mr. Cochin hired Damask 2. Actually, I fear it may be my fault. As I was telling you earlier, we were to determine which statue was the real one as a part of today's event. But because of the Yadagadasu and the fire here, that got cancelled, didn't it? <laughs> Actually relieved the rest of the event had been cancelled. For you see, Babel's statue, well, it's just a replica. And did Mr. Cochin know that about Babel's Prima Duck statue? Of course he knew. That's why he was the only person I could consult with. We'd have to do something once our statue was revealed as a replica. As to be expected, I was very nervous today, as this would impact our country's authority. Yes, I understand. Well, when I told Manny my concerns, he said, Let me handle it. It'll be all right. I'll find a way to make sure you're the ambassador of the reunited Kodopia. At the time, I thought he was trying to cheer me up. But when I saw that note, I realized he was serious. Mr. Cochin conducted a lot of business behind your back. I assume he did all that to ensure that you are the next Code Dopian ambassador. But why was he trying so hard, I wonder? He was so much better at getting things done than I ever was or will be. I don't know the answer to why he was trying so hard yet. But I suspect he had an ulterior motive in mind beyond just simple kindness. If, um, my best guess is maybe he was more content working in the shadows, controlling someone he saw as easily manipulatable. I mean, that's the type of thing that happens fairly often. Suddenly, a gumshoe arrives. Ah, well, here you are, Mr. Edgeworth. Gumshoe thief. Laren of the best. It's good times. Detective Gumshoe, have you collected the information that I requested? Sure haven't. Yup, got it all right here, sir. Here you go, okay? Feel free to take a look. It's for you, after all. What's all this, Gummy? It's all the information on this room that I got from the Embassy and Interpol people. Now we know exactly how this room was before and after the fire. Good work, detective. Nah, it was nothing, sir. I'm an expert at getting people to talk. Quite frankly, yeah. I think it's just because he's such a nice and likable dude. Wow. You two remind me so much of my father and Uncle Bad. What do you mean? As prosecutor and detective, your dynamic is just like theirs back in the day. Bad acted like gumshoe? Huh. Well, don't you worry. I'm going to find my own wonderful partner someday. And when I do, I'm going to become a good Yadagata suit just like my father, right? 
Please don't make me question. Uh, don't ask me questions to which I have no answers to, Kay. But well, I can say that it's truly a wonderful thing to find a partner you can trust. Ah, yeah, you bet. He could mean that about both of them. So what now, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Yes. Oh, she hype. That gadget, Mr. Thief, is it? That thing you call your secret weapon? Oh, you mean Little Thief? <laughs> You're coming to rely on it, aren't you? I mean. This will be the third time we've ever used it, so I don't know if I would call it a reliance. I, I don't need a crutch like that. I'm only asking because I need it for the investigation. From the information Detective Gumshoe gathered and the ambassador's testimony, I'd like you to please recreate this room as it was during the third floor fire. You got it. All right, here we go. Dark skies of evening when no other bird dares take wing. One alone remains all seeing. Now witness the true power of a real modern day Robin Hood. Or at least a little, John. 